In today's Business Owners Corner, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about single stock ETFs. Single stock ETFs, ETF is an acronym for Exchange Traded Fund, have made a lot of headlines recently. And uh, I can start by explaining what an ETF is. Basically, an ETF is very similar to a mutual fund. It's different than a mutual fund. In a mutual fund, you give money to an investment manager at the end of the day, the investment manager figures out what the net asset value or the value per share of their fund is, and then they hand you back a certain number of shares based on that NAV. So if you give them $10,000, they wait till the end of the day, figure out the price per share, and they divide $10,000 by that number and give you a commensurate number of shares. With an ETF, it's a little bit different. You have these, auth they're called authorized participants, a couple dozen investment banks on Wall Street. They take a bunch of securities, they put them in a trust somewhere, lock them up, and then they create out of thin air these shares of this ETF. So in the S&P 500, this is a really common thing that's been uh, done for about 30 years. And for some technical reasons, ETFs are a little bit more tax efficient than mutual funds are. They have their drawbacks in certain circumstances, but it's really the predominant investment vehicle of the day for a number of reasons. Well. More recently, single stock ETFs have come out. And so if you're an investor who wants to invest in the S&P 500 companies, you can buy an ETF that uh, gives you exposure to all those 500 companies at a very, very low cost. That makes a lot more sense. It's far more efficient than going into your brokerage account and buying you know, one share of each of the S&P 500. That's time consuming and inefficient. It's far more efficient to just buy one thing that includes those 500 companies in the same proportion. So more recently, these single stock ETFs have come out. And so if you look at them, it represents a position of one underlying company. And I'll use Tesla as an example. This is, this is a popular one. And so you might say, well, why would I buy an ETF that represents one share of Tesla when I can just buy the same share of Tesla for the exact same cost. And these days, uh, the commissions are basically free anyway. So if there's no difference, I may, I may as well buy the underlying asset directly as opposed to doing it through some ETF wrapper. Well, the single stock e ETFs exist because they don't represent a flat 100% ownership of one share. Some of them are an inverse of one share of ownership. Some of them are leveraged. And the idea is that they are useful tools for short-term traders who want a lot of price action and want to go in and out of the security a lot. So if you're somebody who has, let's, let's say, uh, $10,000 in the brokerage account, you think that Tesla is going to go up that day and you want to buy $15,000 worth of Tesla shares, to do that, you have to go on margin. You have to borrow $5,000 from your brokerage firm, buy the $15,000 worth of stock. Your brokerage firm will charge you a little bit of interest on that. And then later that day, if the price rises, you sell and hopefully you're, you're uh, clearing more than the $15,000 that you purchased the shares for but you only have $10,000 of, of cash in the account. The other 5,000 is borrowed from the firm. Well, that's basically what these ETFs are doing. They're giving you exposure to 150% or 200%. A, a two for one exposure here is, uh, is, is pretty common. They're giving you leveraged exposure to the same stock without having to go on margin. So you buy one share of this. If the price goes up by 2% that day, then if you had bought one share of Tesla outright, then you would be up 2% on that investment. If you purchase the levered ETF, the single stock ETF, you might be up by 4% that day. So it's appealing to people who want short-term trading and don't plan on holding these things overnight. If you want to go in and out throughout the day, uh, then maybe it might make sense. The other way that it might make sense is they have inverse ETFs as well. So rather than being levered, this is basically a bet that the price of the underlying stock goes down. If Tesla is trading at $250 a share 
and you think it's going to go down to $240 a share that day, you might short the stock. You borrow it from your a share from your broker, you sell it. If it falls from 250 to 240, you buy it back, give the shares back to the broker and the trades over, you've made 10 bucks. Well, shorting stock is challenging. You're not always able to borrow it. Sometimes if you can borrow it, it's very expensive to do that. And so an inverse single stock ETF gives you that same exposure. You can buy a share of this ETF that gives you inverse coverage to that stock. And if it goes down from 240, 250 to 240, you've made return on that investment. Now, the reason that these things are only for short-term traders is because the way that they're constructed is constructed is using swaps predominantly. If you buy the inverse ETF of Tesla, the manager for that fund is not going out and shorting Tesla shares on your behalf. That shares of that fund exist because some investment bank on Wall Street has issued a swap contract to the authorized participant handling that ETF. And every single day, that swap contract is renegotiated and, and rolled over. So if you're someone who thinks that Tesla is going up, you don't want to buy one of these 2 or 3x levered single stock ETFs. That's only good for the middle of the day. The moment you hold it overnight, the whole swap contract is renegotiated and you lose a lot of that potential exposure. And it's really quite dangerous, frankly, to hold them long term. Levered and inverse ETFs have been around for quite a while, but uh, historically they were only available for baskets of securities. It's relatively new that they're available to just one security at a time. So if you want to bet against the S&P 500, you can buy an inverse S&P 500 ETF. If you want to do that for Tesla, you can do that as well. But the deal is with any of these leveraged or indexed ETFs, uh, inverse ETFs, long-term holdings are not good. You only want to hold them for uh, intraday trading. And honestly, that's often a fool's errand in the first place and should only be with a small portion of your portfolio. So if you've heard about these things in the news, that's where they're coming from. Single stock ETFs, they represent only one position, but they represent leverage on that position or an inverse uh, uh, exposure. So if you buy it here and it goes down, then you make money on the investment. They're all done with swaps. Swaps are just expensive. Wall Street banks like to make money. And for that reason, it's very expensive to hold these things overnight and for long periods of time.